What is the relationship between the structure of matrix vector multiplication and matrix partitions? That is a gorgeous question. Let's recap what we've learned so far in this lesson to really get insights into some answers to that question. Let's remember that when we hear the phrase matrix vector multiplication, that actually may refer to one of two different operations. One of those is called matrix column vector multiplication, where we multiply a M by N matrix on the right hand side by an n by one column vector where the inner dimensions must agree cancel out and produce an output vector whose dimensions are defined by the outer dimensions m by one so that's matrix column vector multiplication the other operation is called row vector matrix multiplication in this case we're multiplying the m by n matrix a on the left hand side by a one by m row vector x transpose the inner dimensions must agree those cancel out and produce an output vector that is a one by n row vector for each of those operations we developed two different approaches to constructing the output for matrix column vector multiplication we had what we call a vectorized version which is we chunked the output deck vector into vector size pieces so we thought about the output b as a linear combination of the columns of A with scalar multiples defined by the individual entries of X. We also had a scalarized version where we were chunking the output, not in terms of a vector, but in terms of scalar valued operations. Specifically, we thought about each entry of the output as a dot product between the i row and the vector x. This gives us our first hint to the relationship between the structure of matrix vector products and matrix partitions. Notice in the vectorized version of matrix column vector multiplication, we're looking at the columns of A, but in the scalarized version, we're looking at the rows of A. We have a similar approach to row vector matrix multiplication. The vectorized version of this looks at producing the output using vector valued operations, specifically scalar row vector multiplication and row vector row vector addition. In this case, when we do the linear combination version of row vector matrix multiplication, we're looking at the rows of A. If we do a scalarized version and we think about producing the individual entries of the output vector B, then the kth entry is going to be a dot product between the vector X and the kth column of A. In other words, in this case, we're looking at the columns of A. In this case, we're looking at the rows of A. The difference between the linear combination or vectorized approach and the dot product or scalarized approach is about how we think about constructing the output, including a focus on how we organize and chunk the data. Is it in scalars or in vectors? To help you develop intuition about how the structure of the operation relates to matrix partition, we're going to refer back to the anatomy of our operation. Notice that in any matrix vector multiplication, we have two factors. So this is going to be a matrix vector product. It could be a row vector and a matrix or a matrix and a column vector but the structure is going to hold every time on the left and right hand side of our product. We have what we call the left factor and the right factor, and those are going to produce an output or the desired product that we want in order to identify patterns on how we think about the structure of the multiplication and how we partition the matrix a wherever it shows up. We're going to ask ourselves two questions. The first question is, is the modeling matrix on the left or the right hand side is the modeling matrix, the left factor, or is it the right factor? And then the other question we're going to ask is, do we want to vectorize or scalarize our output data? Do we want to produce the output data as an entire vector, or do we want to produce each individual entry step by step? In other words, do we want to produce the output data using vector valued operation, or do we want to produce the output using scalar valued operations? Let's look at the different options that we have. So remember the two questions. Is the modeling matrix on the left or the right? For matrix column vector multiplication, the modeling matrix is on the left. For row vector matrix multiplication, the modeling matrix is on the right. In either case, we can either vectorize our data. So think about the output as being generated by vector valued outputs, or we can scalarize the data. Think about the output as being generated by scalar valued output. Let's start with the first entry, entry one, one here. So let's look at how we partition our matrix when we're doing matrix column vector multiplication and generating output in a vector version. So in this case, we know that the modeling matrix is going to be on the left hand side. We're going to take matrix column vector multiplication, and we're going to vectorize our data. We've seen in our definition that the way that we do this is to break up the matrix A into individual columns. 
and then scale those columns by the individual entries of x to produce the output vector b as a linear combination of the columns of a. In other words, when we're doing matrix column vector multiplication with vectorized data, we take the column partition of a and generate the output column vector using a linear combination of the columns of our modeling matrix. So when the modeling matrix is on the left, and we want to produce vector valued output, we chop that matrix into columns. Let's think about what happens when we scalarize our data. So if our modeling matrix is on the left and the right factor is our algebraic worker, we're thinking about matrix column vector multiplication. We're now going to chunk the output data in terms of individual scalars. So we're going to think about B not as a vector, but as a sequence of scalars. And in that situation, we break the modeling matrix A into rows that's called the row partition of a and then we take the dot product of each individual row with the vector x the output of that dot product is a scalar and particular if i dot the ith row with the vector x i get the ith entry of my output vector b which is given by this formula in this case when we have the modeling matrix on the left the algebraic worker on the right and we want to get the individual entries we take the row partition of our modeling matrix and then dot each individual row with the vector x to get the individual entries of the vector on the right hand side let's take a look at our other scenario suppose that instead of being on the left the modeling matrix shows up on the right and we're going to use an algebraic worker on the left hand side to transform this into some other form in this situation we call that row vector matrix multiplication if we want to vectorize our data in other words produce the output using vector valued operations what we do is we chop the modeling matrix into rows and then take linear combination of those rows where the scalars are going to come from the left hand side vector in this situation the output is a linear combination of the rows of our matrix with each scalar coming from the row vector on the left hand side so remember when we want to produce a row vector we take linear combinations of row vectors which means that for row vector matrix multiplication when we want to vectorize that data we take row partitions, we work through the rows of A, scaling each one with the individual entries of the row vector X transpose. And our final situation arises when we take row vector matrix multiplication with the modeling matrix on the right hand side, and we want to scalarize our data, we want to produce individual scalar values for the right hand side output vector. In order to do this, remember that we chopped our modeling matrix into columns, and then each individual entry of the output is going to be a dot product between the vector x and the columns of a which yields a formula for the scalar value of the kth entry of our output as x dotted with the kth column of our matrix a in other words when we're looking at row vector matrix multiplication and we want to scalarize our output data we take the column partition of a and then dot each column with the vector x to produce the kth entry of the output vector so let's do a quick recap when we're doing matrix column vector multiplication and we want to generate the output column vector as a linear combination of vectors, of course we should chop our modeling matrix into column vectors since we're gonna do operations on those to get that output. Similarly, when we're doing row vector matrix multiplication, if we wanna produce the output row vector as a linear combination, of course we should chop our modeling matrix into rows since those are gonna be used to produce that output. Once we know that, it must be the case that the other versions do the other partitions. So specifically, when we do column vector operations, we chop into column. If we do scalar operations, if we're thinking about producing the individual entries, we're going to chop that into rows and take the dot product between the ith row of A and the vector X to get the ith row of the output. Similarly, with row vector matrix multiplication, to get the kth column of the output, we're going to chop this into columns and take the dot product between the kth column and the vector x to get that entry we were looking for. That leads me to my community challenge for this video. One of the most beautiful parts of linear algebra is that we're not just thinking about this as a mathematical construct. There's an entire world of engineering that translates these linear algebraic definitions into software that you can run on the computer. And my question for you is, when we're thinking about the different partitions that we make, how is this related to one, the computer science construct of a for loop, and then two, the way we, in which we might move through a matrix A when it's stored in computer memory? In other words, when we're making the connection between how we chop up the matrix and how we do the operation, how is this related to computer science constructs? In my MATLAB class, we're going to explore exactly that topic. With that, we're going to end this video. Thank you so much for your attention. In the next video, we're going to ask ourselves the question, do we really need four versions of matrix multiplication? I'll see you there.